Before you start to work your way through this course, I would highly encourage you to download the Chrome browser. You can get it by navigating to www.google.com slash chrome. So when you go to that page, you'll see a download link. This is just another internet browser. So you may be used to using Internet Explorer or Firefox. When you're working with Google Docs and uh, processes like that in Google Apps for Education, you'll want to use Google Chrome as your default browser for that. Um, hopefully we'll, we'll get some more videos out later about all the advanced features of Chrome, but all you need to know right now is it is really the best browser to use with Google Apps for Education. So on that note, let's kind of talk about what Google Apps for Education is. If you want to know more about it, you can, of course, Google it. Just type in Google Apps for Education, and this is one of the pages that you'll be taken to. So Google Apps for Education has a whole lot of different components, and I'm going to flip over and look at our Huntsville ISD Google page so that you can see what some of those components are. It comes with email. That's for all staff and students. It can be configured so that students have limited email rights and staff have worldwide email rights. That's the typical way. It includes Google Docs. This is so important because for learning, we want students to be working collaboratively with each other. And Google Docs lets us open up documents, share them with other people, and work on them together real time. It's a super easy system to use, and hopefully you'll be seeing a lot of that soon. It also includes the Google Calendar. So using the Google Calendar, I can have team calendars, for example, so that I can work together with all my colleagues. I can have calendars that are completely private to me. Then I can have a work calendar, for example, that people can see when they try to schedule me for a meeting or something like that. I also have Google Groups. Google Groups are sort of like shared email boxes. So if I want to work with a bunch of different people, I don't want to have to CC all those people on an email every time. I can work in a group so that we can all see every communication. Another part of Google Apps for Education is Google Sites. Google Sites let me make on the fly web pages like the one you see here. This is a Google site for any purpose. Students can make these uh, so that their peers at school and their teachers can see them. They can keep them private to only inside our Huntsville ISD domain, or sometimes we might allow people to publish Google sites to the outside world. We also have Google Videos. This is a place where we can allow users to upload videos for sharing only within our own domain. Um, all of these other tools that are listed on the next row here are add-ons to our Google domain. The tools on the top row are default to our Google Apps implementation, and if you can log in, then you have all of these tools right now. So the next section, we're going to talk about how to log in. To ask you to do is open up your Google Chrome browser. If you've already downloaded it, you should see it on the desktop of your computer. It's a multicolored red, yellow, green circle with a, a blue center. And I'd like to get you to navigate to this web address. So I'll read it aloud to you, and hopefully during this time you'll open up your web browser and navigate to this web address. So, how this will look, um, let me put another window in front here so that you can see. So it will look just like this. I don't have to type in HTTP colon slash slash. I'm going to type GOO dot GL forward slash capital Z number five lowercase y capital Z lowercase j. So pause this video, type that in, and now on my keyboard I'm going to hit return to go. So now we're at our Huntsville ISD Google portal. There will also be a link on our new website to this page. So let's log in to our email account. Um, actually, when we log in, we'll be logged into all of our Google accounts. So how I'll proceed to log in is I'll click the Gmail button right here, and you do the same. So now, at this screen, I'm taken to a Huntsville ISD Google login. I can see that here's a place for my username, and underneath it says at Huntsville-ISD.org. So I'll type my username, that's A. Mayer, and now I'll type my password. If you've never logged in to our Huntsville ISD domain before, then you may not know your password. So let me help you out with that at this point. So if you've never logged in before, your password will be capital H, lowercase ISD, 
and then your birth date in this format. So if you were born in January, you would type 01, we need two digits. If you were born on the 14th, you would type 14. And now if you were born in 1976, you would type 1976. So the format is capital H, lowercase isd, and that's month, month, day, day, year, 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 year. So that's what I'd like you to type into the password space. If you've already logged in before, then you've probably already set your password. So let's go ahead and log in and then we'll resume. All right, we're all logged in and here's my Gmail account and you're now seeing yours and perhaps you see some messages there. Now we need to change our password. Now, if your password is already set to what you would like it to be, then that's all right, you can leave it alone. But if it starts with the HISD and has your, your birth date and all that, then it's time to change that password. So let's go up to this top area where we see our email address and click so that we can see our uh, account settings. So this is what we're looking for. It's right underneath my name and email address and it says account. So let's go up and click there and now over on the left hand side we see security so we'll click here and now we see change password. Let's click here. Now your current password remember is capital H lowercase ISD month month day day year 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 type that in and then type what you want your password to be down here the password is going to need to be at least eight characters long and it's going to need to be complicated enough so I'm going to type in one I think is complicated enough and let's see um, all right I've just made it good enough but I can make it better I can add for example a special character and that will make my password stronger. I might also make one of the letters that I typed a capital letter and that would make my password stronger too. Now I've got to match that password again and then I can click Save. If this password is incorrect, if these passwords aren't strong enough or if they don't match, then I'll, this screen will be reloaded and I'll have to try again. So pause this video and change your password and then we'll resume. So in our getting started video, we're not going to talk yet about how to use Gmail, but we've changed the password and we learned how to log in through our portal. Let's learn how to log in at any Google login screen. So you remember before when we saw our username and password spot we had at HuntsvilleISD.org down here underneath? Well, at this login, we don't see that. So if you find yourself at any Google login, you can use your Huntsville-ISD.org address, but you'll have to type the whole thing if it's not there. So I'll go ahead and type my whole email address and my Huntsville ISD password that I just set, and I'll sign in, and I'll still be able to log in and see the same content. So I hope that helps. Let's move on to the next section in just a moment when you're ready.